Greetings, this is Amy Wentley with Chai Knuckles Knitting, and this is episode 2022-15, Tilda Mittens, Thumb Opening and Decreases. I have two previous videos to this. One showed how to set up to work Magic Loop for the Tilda Mittens, and then the second one showed how to do the um, setup row and the cables for those same mittens. Um, this video is going to show you how to deal with the thumb opening and how to do the decreases. So um, just to get us oriented, um, we just finished a row four of our four row repeat of the cable pattern. Now this isn't what your mitten is going to look like because I'm not working the whole thing because this is a demo. Okay, You were supposed to work those four rows of the body pattern four times total for 16 rows before you come to the thumb opening. So that's where we are now. So still if you have DPNs you should have 19 stitches between your first two needles and you should have 15 stitches on your last needle which is the one with your cables on it. For the people who are working Magic Loop, you're going to have your 19 plain stitches on the front needle and your cable stitches on the back needle. So when you start for the thumb opening, there are two separate sec um, instructions for round 17, one for the left hand and one for the right hand, and it's just where the thumb opening is going to be placed on this first part of round one of your next four round repeat. Okay, so they tell you round 17, 18, 19, and 20. So round 17 equates to a round one of your pattern repeat. Row 18 is round two, row 19 is round three, row 20 is round four. Okay, and then um, after you get past this thumb opening section, round 20, then you are going to repeat rounds one through four of that body repeat again another four times, so another 16 rounds. Um, however, oh, after you do those 16 rounds, then you are going to start doing decreases. So this video is going to talk about how to deal with the thumb openings and then I'm going to show you the two decreases that you're going to be doing in the decrease section. And you should be pretty much set um, for the rest of the mitten, except there will be one more video later on how to actually do the thumb. Okay, so that gets us all oriented. So we're going to work on the left hand. We're going to follow the instructions in the pattern for the left hand. And we start out by knitting nine. So let me set up to do that. And this is going to be, sorry, I got off camera a little bit. One, two, three, four. Oops, sorry, I'm, I'm knitting continental for you. Don't want to confuse you. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it says put the um, next six stitches on scrap yarn. So I'm going to cut a piece of scrap yarn probably about six to nine inches long. I'm going to get a darning needle and I'm going to thread that yarn onto a darning needle and then I'm going to slip the next six stitches onto scrap yarn. At this point if you're using double pointed needles you might have to rearrange how many you have on each needle. Um, that's going to be up to you. So I slip those six neat stitches onto waste yarn. And so I'm going to tie a knot on this waste yarn so that I don't lose those six stitches. Later on we're going to come back and we are going to pick up 
those stitches for the thumb. Okay? Okay, so, and then it says, using backward loop cast on, add six stitches on the right needle. Okay, so the way that you do that, and I've got two different ways of adding stitches for you. This is the backward loop method. Um, I prefer another method, but I'm going to show you this first, okay? Backward loop method, all you do is you make a loop and put it on your needle backwards like that. So you see how the, the end of the loop is coming out of the back of the needle that way and snugging on there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And what this is doing is taking you right back to the original stitch count. So you took six off onto a holder and put six new ones on. Now I don't really like the backward loop because it's loose and so um, it can look a little gappy around your thumb. You can do that if you want, but here's another method. I'm going to take these off. And what I do is, for those of you who know the knitted on cast on, that's what I do. So I end up having to turn the work around, get my yarn and put it in the back, and I am going to knit on six stitches here. So my working yarn is coming out here, out of this left needle. I'm going to knit, and I'm going to knit a stitch, and I'm going to pull a loop out and put it on my left needle, and then tighten that a bit. That's one, two, three, four, five, pull it out, put it back up, and six, insert the needle, wrap to knit, pull it out, put it on the needle. So there are my six new stitches. Then I'm going to need to turn around again, and I'm ready to continue working the rest of the round, which is going to be um, four more stitches, four more knit stitches. And then I'll be in the second half of the round where I'm going to continue the cable pattern that I've been doing um, all along. So, and actually, round one, that is, that is not true. I'm sorry about that. Round one is actually knitting the knits and purling the purls on the back. So I'm going to finish the round with knitting knits and purling purls. Okay, um, so really you're back to normal now. You're going to finish this round knitting the knits and purling the purls, and then you're going to do round two with cables, round three knitting knits, purling purls, round four cables, and you're going to keep doing that from this point. And you're going to have these extra um, thumb stitches just hanging here waiting for you to pick up and work your thumb later. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for a minute and I'm going to come around and I want to show you how you are going to do decreases when it comes time to start the tip of the mitten. Hello, I'm back. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and start decreases for the top of the mitten. Now understand again that this is my demo piece. So on your piece, you would have done a bunch of ribbing. You would have done four of the four row repeats and then separated for the thumb. And then you would have worked, finished that repeat and worked four more four row repeats before you started to decrease. Well, since this is a demo, mine is going to be much shorter. I didn't work as long as you did. But what we're going to do now is act like we are ready to start the decrease rounds. 
and I will show you how to do the two different kind of decreases that this calls for. And um, I want to remind you that while you're working round 1 through 11 of the decreases, that you do pay attention to um, where the decreases are laid out in the pattern. Um, because in the first few rounds, you'll only do two decreases. In later rounds, you're actually going to do four decreases. Um, and then I think even some more as we go along. But um, we're going to start this round, and this is round one of the decrease section. And we're going to start out by knitting one. Um, designers usually don't have you do decreases right on the edge of a piece. So they usually have a buffer stitch first. So this is our knit one buffer stitch. And then we are going to go ahead and do a slip slip knit. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. In the pattern, the directions say to slip two as if to knit separately. So you put your needle in as if to knit and drop the first stitch off and then separately you put your needle in the next stitch as if to knit and drop that off. Then she tells you to move both of these stitches back to the left needle and then knit them together through the back loop. So I put my needle into the back of both of these stitches and then pulled a knit stitch through. So that's how to do it according to the pattern. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's exactly the same thing that we just did except um, with one less movement. We're going to make it a little bit of a shortcut. So let me get these back the way that they were. My way is to slip one as if to knit, slip the second one as if to knit, and then I'm going to take my left needle and put it in the front of these two stitches on my right needle. And at this point by doing that, that's just the same as putting those two stitches back on the left needle and putting this stitch, this needle in the back. Okay, so I, I'll show you that again just so you can see it one more time. Slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, then put my left needle in the front of those two stitches and then wrap the yarn in the back and pull through. So that's slip slip knit. And then the instructions say to knit 12. This is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then it says knit two together, and then to knit two together, we just put our right hand needle into two stitches at the same time, wrap and pull through, that's knit two together. And we finish up the round by knitting one, and we're going to turn and finish up the rest of the round with, come on, Okay, and then we're going to go here and we're going to purl one. And we're going to knit two. Purl one. Knit six. Whoops. Purl one, knit two, sorry, purl one, knit one. And that finishes round one of the decrease section, and we're now down to 32 stitches. So you are going to continue on round two, there will be no decreases. On round three, 
there are going to be four decreases. There's going to be a slip slip knit on the front needle and, and a knit two together at the end of the front needle. And there's going to be a slip slip knit on the front of the back needle and a knit two together on the end of the back needle. And you're going to continue to work the decreases until you get to the end. You're going to cut off and you're going to leave a um, long tail and you're going to weave your needle through and pull it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of rounds of decreases. I'm going to show you how to tie off and then I'm going to show you how to finish the thumb. So I'm going to pause for right now and I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back. So once you've finished the decreases and you get down to eight stitches, you're ready to finish off the top of the hat. Now this is a demo, remember, and I didn't actually follow the pattern here. So your decreases are going to be a little bit more gradual and you're going to finish with the, the um, cable pattern is actually going to continue up through your decreases, unlike mine, since this is just a little demo piece. Okay. So once you're left with eight stitches, go ahead and get all your stitches back on the needles. You'll have your um, needle with the working yarn coming out of the back needle, the end of round needle here. You're going to go ahead and leave a long tail, probably again 8 to 12 inches, and cut that off um, and set your working yarn aside. And then thread a darning needle with your end of hat yarn that you have now and you're going to start on the beginning of round needle and you're going to move these stitches off the needle onto your darning needle where the um, end of hat yarn is so move all those stitches off the needle it's off that one needle then you're going to have to pull your needle through to get the stitches over here back on a needle to make them easier to work with and flip and go ahead and pull your end of hat yarn here and finish those last four stitches and that looks a little bit like I did a yarn over there by accident with my yarn so my four stitches and I'm going to pull it through and now you pull your yarn all the way around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my stitches one more time I can see them there I'm going to go through my stitches one more time with this yarn all eight of them so I go through it a total of two times and pull go ahead and get that last one and pull tight when you pull tight it's going to look like this there's probably going to be kind of a loose stitch there. So what I generally do is I will come around the back of that stitch and twist it one more time. And then I stick my yarn through the top of the mitten, or stick my needle through the top of the mitten and pull it through and yank hard. And then your top is done. And what you'll do when you finish with the mitten is you'll turn your mitten inside out and you will then weave this yarn through some of the pearl bumps on the back for about an inch or so. Cut the yarn and the top is done. So the next thing we are going to do is pick up for the thumb. To pick up for the thumb, you are going to use your smaller needle, okay? Um, if you were using a size 8, you'll probably go down to a size 6. If you're using whatever, go down about two sizes, okay? So it says here, pick up the six stitches from the scrap yarn. So I'm going to start out by just taking the stitches that are on my scrap yarn. I'm going to take my one needle from the right to the left like this at the scrap yarn and put all this scrap yarn or put all these stitches that are on the scrap yarn on the needle. Now do you see this last stitch here? 
Do you see how the the yarn that was holding it got sucked up into that last stitch? You need to pull that yarn straight so you can see that stitch on the needle. Don't accidentally pick up this stitch. You need to pull that yarn through and pick the stitch up off that waste yarn if it gets sucked in the stitch like that. So do you see how that stitch is now on the waste yarn? I'm picking up that stitch. Okay, so that is six of my stitches that were being held. Okay, for right now I'm going to go ahead and leave that waist yarn on there. I guess I'm just superstitious, so I'm going to do that. And then it says pick up one stitch between the last stitch from the scrap yarn and the first stitch from these cast on stitches that you did before. So I'm just going to pick up a random stitch at the edge here and I'm going to pick up this one. I think. So you see how when you come here, there's a stitch on the edge, stitch on the edge, stitch on the edge. There were three of them. I think I'll pick up the second one instead. So I just pick up the right leg of that or any leg that you can get that seems pretty tight. And then at this point when I have seven stitches on there, I'm going to want to pull my needle all the way through again and get these thumb stitches on the needle that's pointing this way and take my original needle and start picking up these six cast on stitches. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up the closer side of the stitches to me so that we have a nice, we have any kind of ridge or seam go inside the mitten. So, and I pick these up from behind. So that's one, two, and then Let's go three, four, eh. and I'm actually using my bigger needle, so that's why it's a little harder for me. A smaller needle is going to be easier for you to pick up. So I pick up six of the cast on stitches, and I'm going to get these on my needle if it kills me. It's really tight for me because I used the bigger needle, so call me crazy. And I use the bigger needle because I'm doing a demo here and I just didn't want to take the time to change needles. Probably should have. There we go. It's going now. It's going. Okay. And then, actually it's not going very well. Let me see if I can get these on the needle. Stretch, 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 stretch. Come on, baby. There we go. I got it on. Phew! Finally. Okay. So don't use your bigger needle like I did by accident. And then you're going to want to pick up one more stitch from between here and here. And I count about, let's say, one, two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up, if I can slide my stitches again, the middle stitch here. And I've got seven on this needle too. So now, we are set up with our beginning of round stitches have the um, waist yarn on them. The end of round do not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start working the ones that were on the stitch. That's the beginning of the round. And so we have to pick up a new piece of yarn from our ball of yarn. We're going to go ahead and pull out our back needle for the um, that's the end of round needle, so we can start working the beginning of the round. I'm going to insert my needle as if to knit, and then I'm going to take the end of my needle. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see everything here a little better. I'm going to have my needle in as if to knit. I'm going to loop my yarn over the needle and pull it through, and that's my first knit stitch. All the stitches around the thumb are going to be knit stitches. There's no pattern on the thumb. And so the um, the pattern tells you to work 15 rounds. And I just worked with my tail. So there's a um, good lesson for what not to do. And so um, let me start this over again. 
So I slipped the yarn over my needle and pulled it through for a knit stitch and then I want to grab my working yarn, not my tail, and work those seven stitches for the thumb on the front here. So this is my beginning of the round needle and I'm going to go ahead and pull my needle through so I can work my end the stitches on my end of round needle. Get the tail out of the way. Slip the stitches up. These are still tight because these are still my, ugh. These are the ones I had trouble getting on there before. The next round it's going to loosen up really nicely for me, so I'm not worried. So I pull my beginning of the round needle out to finish my end of the round here, and as I said before, the thumb is just a bunch of knit stitches all the way around. The pattern calls for you to now go ahead and work 15 rounds all knit before you start the thumb decreases. So at this point I'm going to pause the video again. I'm going to work a few more rounds of the thumb. You would work 15. And then um, I will show you how to do the thumb decreases. Hi, I'm back. Okay, let's pretend that I've worked 15 rounds with the thumb. I actually only worked four, but we're going to pretend I worked 15. And I will show you how to tie off the thumb. So, we're going to start out with some decreases and they are easy decreases because what we're going to do is knit two together to the end of the round. And I have currently 17 stitches on my thumb. Not 17, seven, 13 stitches on my thumb. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have 14 stitches. I don't know what I did. So you will have 14 stitches and so the first decrease round that you do, you are going to have, you're going to knit two together everything. And since you have an even number of stitches, you're going to end up with um, an even number when you knit two together because, you know, an even number divided by two is always going to be an even number. I did not. So um, I'm just not going to do a knit two together on that last stitch there. But you are going to knit two together all the way around. Okay. And then, sorry, I'm having, if you have a little bit of trouble getting that last stitch up, just squeeze it closely to the other needle and it'll um, kind of bridge that gap and help you get the stitch over a little easier. And so on this end of round needle, I'm going to go ahead and knit two together every one. And then I am going to be left, since I started with 14 and I knit two together all the way around, I should end up with seven. So let's see if we do. So I know I've got three in this on this back needle now, and I've got four on the front needle. So for the decrease round two, what you are going to do is knit two together all the way around and you're going to have one left over so you're just going to knit one plain one. So I'm going to go ahead and knit two together on the front of round needle and I end up with two and then I'm going to work two together on the end of round needle with one left over. Okay, and at this point you are now going to have four stitches at the end of your thumb. So it says bind off the tip by drawing the tapestry needle through the remaining stitches and fascinating that, fastening them and weaving in the ends. So I am again going to cut an 8 to 12 inch piece of yarn. I'm going to get my darning needle and I'm going to thread the needle with my working yarn now and I'm splitting it like crazy. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my needles situated again so I have all my stitches on needles 
just to make this easier and I'm going to take my ending yarn here that's on the tapestry needle and I'm just going to move the stitches off the needle they all came off and put my tapestry needle through all four of those stitches and then I'm going to put it through all four of those stitches one more time and pull tight then I'll put my needle through the top of the thumb and I'm going to reach into the mitten and pull that needle through and pull hard to make a knot and that's what the top of my thumb looks like now little baby thumb and then I'll turn my work inside out and I'm going to go and weave the um, yarn for about an inch through the purl bumps and cut and then the last end I have to weave in is for the first the beginning and so I'm going to take that end and put it on a tapestry needle oh this business here was what was marking my um, end of round before so that's what all that excitement's about and so to weave in at the cuff what I'll do is I'll join this part of the cuff to this part where there's a little gap so I'll go ahead and I'll go under the two legs of that stitch and pull through and come back to where the yarn started just to complete that stitch see how it does that and then I will take my yarn and I'm going to go to the inside of the ribbing so that you can't see it on the front and then I'm going to weave my yarn along the ribbing I pick a side so I'm just doing a side of this rib and pulling my yarn through for about an inch and then I'm going to cut it tight or cut it um, close and then that finishes off the mitten now you might have a gap at the edge of your thumb here do you see how I do here a littler one on this side if you want to close up that gap what you can do is on this side you have the end of round or you have the beginning of round yarn when you added that yarn for the thumb so you can go ahead and use this to close up the gap and then you can weave in this end at the same time so here we go so what I would do is I've got this hole here you see it and I can come a little closer for you see the hole there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the other side of the hole and I'm going to put my yarn through a stitch there at the other side of the hole and come back to the stitch here that I came out of originally and I'm going to pull it tight and that's going to pull that tight okay you see how it pulls that tight and then I can go ahead and I can stick my needle in here again on the other side and pull it through and then I turn inside out and I can weave the needle through some pearl bumps and I'm done and that edge is that is closed up that gap and with the other side since I don't have a piece of yarn already there I can go ahead and take yarn that is already on my needle and I can just go ahead and bridge the gap between the two sides and what I'll do is I'll usually come up from underneath and then go down on the other side so that I have both of my ends in here I will go ahead both of my ends are in here now I will cross them I can knot them if I like and cut them close and then that will bridge the gap okay I can also weave those in ends in if I prefer okay and that finishes the tilde mitten isn't that cute I wonder what that would fit okay well stay tuned for more videos on my youtube channel thanks for joining me today bye bye